We'll now take a more detailed look at actually creating some functionality within the MVC pattern. The first thing I want to do though is remove some of the example files that come with the PHP MVC project. So I'm going to remove this tutorial folder here. I'm also going to remove this install folder which is just the example data used for the songs model. I'm not going to obviously delete the config. Inside of controller, let's remove the home.php controller, even though we're going to be removing, uh, creating that again. And we'll also create this, uh, remove the songs controller. Obviously leave uh, libs alone. For models, let's remove both of these models because we don't actually need these. And for the views, let's remove the templates here, the footer and the header. Let's remove everything from home. and let's remove the songs directory completely because we'll be using this home folder. Uh, we'll also inside of public remove the CSS files here, the image and the JavaScript. So basically as this stands now, this is quite a nice starting point for a project that you want to base on the MVC pattern. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just go back to the browser and refresh this and you'll see that we get a couple of errors here. So we'll go ahead and tidy these up. That's simply because we've deleted some files that we should still have. Um, but why do we get these errors? Well, let's examine this so we can sort of get to know this uh, skeleton application a bit better. The reason we get the first error is because we've not provided anything or, uh, within the URL, which hasn't found a specific controller. It's therefore decided to go and look up home.php by default. So because of this, well, we can actually look at this inside of the code. Inside of application, you can see here that if a controller doesn't exist, um, we've got either an invalid URL, so we just simply show uh, the, home, uh, the, in, uh, the home controller, and then we render index. And that's just the method within home. Um, you can see a new object being created here. Don't worry if you don't understand this too much. You should go and look into it and definitely learn how the uh, basis of this works. But let's recreate this home controller. So I'm going to create a new file here and obviously save it as home.php. And now we can start to look at building the uh, structure of this from the from scratch. So this is a class of home with a capital H. And this is going to extend the basic controller or the base controller. And that can be found within controller.php. This is this class here. So we've extended that. We can make use of that functionality. We're still going to get an error here though. The top one will go, but we now got home index missing. And that's obviously because it's an undefined method. So let's create a method here or a function called index. So as a test, let's just echo out this is the index method on the home class, just as an, as an example. And you can see that that works. Now, this is obviously absolutely not what we want to do. And the reason being is that, um, let's just pull these down. The reason being is that the controller doesn't output stuff to the user. The views do. So now let's create a view inside of home and we'll call this index as well. So let's just say hello here. Now this isn't going to affect our application at all. We're just going to see nothing here because we're not doing anything within the home controller. So what do we do? Well, let's create a variable and pass this down to the view. Let's render the view first, just so we can see it within the browser. So I'm going to require in. Now remember that while we're here, we're still within the root of our application. So we're in this sort of section here within index.php. So we need to require in as if we were from here. So I'm going to say application slash views slash home slash index.php. So that's now going to render that view and we'll see hello, which is the uh, text we put into the view earlier. Now, the view will basically contain, as I said, everything that's going to be output to the user, but you can, of course, output variables to it. So let's create a variable here called name, and I'm just going to write Alex. Inside of index.php, let's go ahead and output this. 
Now you can either use PHP like this and then echo name and let's refresh. There we are. Or you can just go ahead and use the short output functionality, which looks like that. It does look a little bit cleaner. And because we're not using a specific templating language, this does make things look a little bit more simple. So we're outputting a variable from the uh, view here, uh, from the controller here uh, into the view, which is perfect. We're already halfway there. But what happens if we want to utilize some functionality? What happens if we want to say, I don't know, add a couple of numbers together? We can create a model to, dis to demonstrate that. And this is where we said earlier that all of the uh, logic in your application is stored in models. Of course, we wouldn't want to do something like this. For example, create a calc or add function here and then return a plus b if we had a and b in here. This is not what we want to do. We want to store all of the functionality inside of a model. The reason being is that the putting that kind of functionality in here isn't reusable because we're currently accessing the home index part of the controller. Just as a side note, if I were to do home index, that still loads this view here. Now what happens if we have another? Uh, this doesn't really make sense inside of home, but for example, if you wanted to render some kind of contact page out, let's create a new file in here. Obviously, you would probably create a new folder in views and you would have a new controller for this. But let's just call this contacts.php and I'll just say contact us here. So inside of home now, we've got this contact um, on the home controller. So we can just do the same. We can require in application views home contact.php. Um, so how do we access this? Well, when we refresh and hit contact, this automatically directs us to the contact view. So you can already see how easy this is to work with and how clean everything looks. We're clearly defining, if we just pull this down for consistency, we're clearly defining everything and then we're just outputting it in separate views. It's absolutely perfect. So let's look at this model example. We'll clear up this contact stuff first because it doesn't quite make sense in uh, the context we put it in. So we want to uh, basically calculate the result of two numbers. So let's create a model. I'm going to call this calc model. And I'm going to save this as calcmodel.php. So we obviously need to define the class here. And this is going to be class calc model, and that's it. We're not going to extend any functionality here. What we are going to do, though, is we're going to create a method in here that will return the uh, result of adding two numbers together. So let's create a public function here and we'll call that add. And we'll do exactly as I just showed in the controller earlier, which is obviously bad practice. So we'll uh, do the same. We'll have A and B, and we'll return the result of A added to B. So if it was one and two, it would just be three. And we just return the integer three. So inside of home now, we need to do, uh, we need to basically find some way to make use of this new model. And we do this using the load model method, and then we give the name of the class. So let's take a look at uh, inside of libs and inside of controller. If we scroll down, you can see that we've got this load model method here, and there's a description of what it does here. So go ahead and read that in your own time. So instead of outputting name, let's get rid of this. And inside of our index.php, let's get rid of this too. In fact, we'll get rid of all of that. So now we've got our model, we've got our controller, and we've got our view. We can say result equals something, something. So how do we do this? Well, we first need to uh, be able to uh, actually load in the model. So let's set that to zero first. Let's say calc model equals, and then we'll give this a uh, value. Well, we won't give it a value. We'll make use of the load model method. 
This is loading a model in so we can start to use its functionality. And the reason for this is we're loading models in when we need them. So we're loading them in on the fly. So I'm going to call this, uh, sorry, calc model. So this is loading in the calc model here and we can now go ahead and use this. So the result of a function is basically just going to use the calc model. In fact, let's call this calc just to make things simple. So I'm going to say calc add 5 and 10. So inside of calc, we know that we've got this add method and we've called this method passing in the values or the arguments a and b and that's going to return us the result. And now, if everything went right, we get no errors. Perfect. We haven't outputted anything yet, but we'll do that in just a moment. We already know how to output stuff. So inside of index.php now, we can actually output this result. So we can say the result is, and then result. Perfect. So let's check out and see if this worked. We should get 15. Perfect. So we've now seen an example of basically the MVC pattern. We have a view here, which basically outputs a result. We've calculated that result based on the logic contained within a calc model, which we've loaded in when we've required it. Then we've rendered our view, which we just spoke about a second ago. So there is the MVC pattern. 